All right, guys, good morning. Um, I wanted to show you something. I guess we're, we're gonna talk about um, unexpected results when it comes to breeding. Um, for the longest time, I wanted this plant to look amazing, you know, long spined, just, you know, very aggressive. And I also wanted it to produce, you know, a colorful flower. So this is Zelly 26 by Clyde and Clyde usually produces really long spines. Clyde is a Peruvianus. Zelly 26 is already a colorful hybrid. Um, but instead what I got was these white flowers, right? So, you know, being that I, I breed and hybridize over here, I'm kind of used to white flowers already from a lot of the columnar, you know, trichos already. So I was kind of like, eh, I wasn't really impressed, but with the comments I got from you guys, um, actually, you, you guys were like, no, that's really cool that, you know, out of 13, 12 inches, 13, 14 inches, um, you got a plant to flower so quickly, and it still has a really good looking stem or good looking column. Um, so thank you guys for having me, um, see a different perspective when it comes to Jesus and um, breeding, you know, not everything needs to be a colorful flower and not, not everything has to be the perfect blend of the two parents. But um, yeah, I saved the pollen. I pollinated it with a uh, colorful flower, <laughs> our VRG number one, because I, I do like that peachy color. But I also want to show you um, another one. And this one is another unexpected um, uh, result when it comes to breeding. And this is, okay. this one here is a Scop VRG. Had, I've had these for three, four years now. You know, I keep them in small pots and maybe that's why they flower a little bit earlier. But this one here, sorry, it's getting washed out. This one here is a Scop crossed with a variegated red grandiflorus. These are, mis this is a misplant hybrid. Um, the other one was a misplant hybrid also. These are, these are from his seed from four years ago. Um, flower is a very light peachy color. And the thing that was really cool about it is usually Trichoceras flowers, uh, the buds themselves, have uh, tons of fur. And you can see here, this is pretty, pretty furless, hairless. Um, so when, when it was a bud, my assumption, because it was so green, was it was just going to be another white flower. But this one here did not disappoint. And this Scott PRG at nine inches, but I've been growing it for mm, four years, um, has finally flowered for the first time. And the flower is really nice. So these Scott PRG or Zelly, or you're going to see a lot of um, breeding where we're trying to produce these shorter spine plants that will produce flowers that look like this. Um, or in the instance of the instance of this Clyde and Zelly, the goal was these very Peruvianist dominant uh, genetics to show up, which it did, and I'm happy it did, and then the flower to express kind of more like this. Um, but you know, I'm still okay with it. You guys changed my mind. Um, I will use this for breeding, keep it going, and maybe try to keep the spines this way, but change the color of the flower, but it's gonna take another four years. So uh, sorry about that. But yeah, look, two unexpected situations or um, growths that came from breeding. There's a furry, uh, trichomes, whatever you want to call it. And then this one doesn't have any of that fur on it. So unexpected color flower, colorful flower here and unexpected white flower from here. All right. So we got two things and it happened and I'm going to go pollinate this guy now because this one's already done. All right.